Hey, I'm Rob from Skid Steer Genius. Uh, a lot of times I'm working with people and they're not quite understanding exactly how to how the 7 pin differentiates from the 14 pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through that with you today and give you a little bit of an update on how things work and what we did to kind of correct some of the issues that we had with some of our machines. And uh, a lot of times I'm dealing with people that just don't really understand how this stuff hooks up. So I'm just going to kind of run through that as well. So I'm just going to start with this machine. This machine came, uh, this was an A770. It came with a 7 pin only. Uh, I requested a 14 pin because I've always done that. I've always, that's the very first thing I get on any machine. I get high flow, uh, cab with AC and heat, and I get a 14 pin. Uh, what came was a 14 pin cable that was tie wrapped to the top of the boom. Well, that's gonna last all of about five minutes. As soon as I go through the woods and a tree falls on, it's gonna tear the cable off, and those cable sets are about $400 every single time you have to change them out. So that's a problem. So I'll show you what we did to alleviate that problem. So what we did here was I grabbed my mag drill and I drilled a hole right in the front of the boom. And when I did that, that actually made it easier to install because I was able to stick my fish tape right up through the center of the boom. It went all the way to the back. I just dropped the connector down through the back there and I fished it right to the front here, put the nut on it and it's been perfect ever since. I do have a tendency to tear the caps off or the dust caps off once in a while. Uh, which I've done in this case, um, but it's not a big deal. Um, this, this one's fine. Uh, so this was not a recommended procedure from Bobcat. I actually talked to one of their engineers and they told me that it voided the boom warranty. I told them if the booms were that weak, then I probably don't want their machines anymore anyways. But if there was a problem, I can take care of anything like that. We do all kinds of welding here. We do, do all kinds of fabrication. It's not a big deal. So I've run it like this. I posted it just as a... Uh, um, uh, a little blog maybe about five or six years ago and I've seen other people other people have told me customers have told me that this this has come in with uh, with this exactly in place like this so obviously the dealers are actually took note and they're doing that I asked a couple dealers about it and they said yeah we just ignore what Bobcat says and we we install them this way because it makes no sense to have a cable running across the top of the boom so with that said we've got the 14 pin installed and we have a seven what they did was on this machine is they have the main bus and I'm going to show you that now. So if you go to the back of the machine, right, right above the battery, there's this great big fat cable coming out. This is kind of the, the spinal cord of your machine. If you look here, there's a cable that comes right out with this little barrel connector on here. This barrel connector generally goes straight into your seven pins. So I'm just gonna disconnect it if I can, and I'll show you each cable. Okay, so when these kits are installed, the smooth cable right here, this is the easiest way to, to figure this out. This smooth cable here, this is your seven pin cable. There's a cable that's got a, uh, that goes up here, right here. It's got this flex uh, type of wrap around it. That's your 14 pin cable. So that right away, that differentiates the two types of cables. Here's your smooth cable, that's your seven pin. Here's your 14. Now here's what they do though, to add the 14, or sorry, if they have the seven, this seven pin is just sitting here like this. It's plugged straight in to this bus. That's it, it's just plugged straight in and it's, there's nothing else that exists here. When you wanna add the 14 pin, there's this little box that has magnets on. They add this, the magnets hold it onto the side of the, of the machine inside here. This is the 14 pin cable coming off and going away. And then this is a little Y adapter. What this Y adapter does is it comes in here and it plugs into the bus cable. So now the signals are going through here into this little computer and then they're being decoded and they're going out for the 14 pin and now also out for the seven pin. So that allows me to drive both at the same time. Because of the smarts inside this machine, it knows when you're pushing the buttons 
uh, it's sending both sets of signals out. So if you have a 14 pin installed, you're going to get the signals coming out the 14 pin and it's going to run your attachments. If you have a 7 pin installed, you're going to have the signals going out, out the bus cable here. It's going to go out to the 7 pin connector and it's going to run your 7 pin attachments. So this little computer back here basically works just like one of our genius controllers. We have the little genius controllers that plug right on the front of the machine. Um, they're usually about half to a third of the, to actually a fifth of the price of what these are. So in a lot of instances, you don't really need this anymore and you don't have to then go through the, you know, having to drill your boom or putting the things out. If you just want to run a 14 pin attachment or whatever, just get one of our, our genius adapters and plug it in. You don't even need this anymore. And in fact, they kind of made this difficult for people, I believe. Um, they did this so that people would stop buying these and they would only buy seven pin and then they wouldn't have to... Uh, they would then be stuck having to buy Bobcat attachments because all the Bobcat attachments are the only ones that do seven pin. So you don't really need this box, but if you have it, this is kind of how it works. Uh, something that you have to be aware of is when both are plugged in uh, and you're trying to run, say, a Genius controller, you may have the pumps starting and stopping. And that's because the 14 pin, it behaves that way. You have to disable the pumps, which means you put a jumper between K and L pins in the 14 pin, and that allows you to, to jumper it out. And, and that shuts the pumps off. Uh, otherwise, you can just unplug it from the back here too. So you can unplug the 14 pin portion and just plug the seven straight in again and then run of our controllers. So that's pretty much it. It's quite a simple setup back here. Um, I've had these on these machines, geez, going back to, I think 2002, 2003 on my first A300. I think I had it on there. So these have been around a long time. They all pretty much look the same way. I've helped troubleshoot people for a long time on how these things work and how you know how to plug them in, how to test them. Um, so if you have any questions, contact us through the website.